We're, we're embarrassed many times by our failures, but it's those failures that if you can talk through them and you share them and you're vulnerable about them, there are messages in the mess. In this episode of The Creator Community, we'll meet Hillary DeCesar, a former Silicon Valley executive turned entrepreneurship and CEO development coach. We'll hear how Hillary found herself staring face-to-face with multiple life setbacks and found a way to relaunch her life and career again and again. We'll then follow Hillary's journey of landing herself on the hit TV show, The Secret Millionaire, to shovel horse manure. We'll discover what she learned through each of these setbacks that drove her to create the roadmap to help herself and many others relaunch their lives, no matter the setback. And then we'll hear how all this led to her newest book, Relaunch, Spark Your Heart to Ignite Your Life. Check out the show. Welcome to the Creator Community. This is a podcast from book publisher, New Degree Press, or NDP. I'm your host, John Saunders. This show is designed to celebrate, elevate, and showcase many of the incredible authors that have published their books with NDP. This year, NDP will cross over 1,300 published authors and has earned the 293rd spot on the Inc. Magazine 5000 list. This is the fastest growing privately held companies in America. This is episode 13 of season four, and today I have with me Hillary DeCesar, author of Relaunch, Spark Your Heart to Ignite Your Life, due out this May 2022. Hillary is the founder of the Relaunch Company. She is a former award-winning Silicon Valley CEO with over two decades of entrepreneurial and executive coaching experience. She's an international best-selling author, has worked for Oracle, a Fortune 500 company, and has garnered over 100 sales managerial awards, including top account manager worldwide. De Caesar also hosts her own top-rated podcast, The Relaunch Podcast, and The Relaunch on Voice America Talk Radio Network. She holds a psychology degree and a range of certifications in her field. And as a loyal philanthropist, De Caesar has been featured on ABC's hit series, Secret Millionaire. As an innovator in neuropsychology, as it relates to business and life, De Caesar has cultivated her experience to illuminate a heart-driven path to conquer today's shifting landscape, reimagining personal and professional success. Hillary, great to see you. Welcome to the show. John, it's my pleasure. I've been so excited about this. The pleasure is all mine. So before we get into your book, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your journey and how you landed maybe on this TV show. That's fascinating to me. Well, I have to say that my life has always followed or my businesses have always followed my life, right? What I was doing at that time. And so when I first started thinking about, you know, what do I really want to do? It was much more around, well, what was familiar with me? It was my dad was a doctor. My grandfather was a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor. And I got to college and it was just like, you know what? I took those first few classes. I'm like, I'm not cut out for this. And so I snuck my way in via a huge snowstorm that hit University of Colorado and the computer systems went down. And so I signed up for a fourth year business class called personal selling. And that changed my life. I got into the class first day. The professor's like, okay, everyone who is here, congratulations. This is the coveted class. You've worked hard to get here and let's jump in. And at the end of the class, I had to go up and say, you know what? I I haven't taken any of the prereqs. I really am not, I I have to say, I'm not really even sure half the things you just said, but I really have to tell you, I think I can do the final because it was in, in front of the class. It was about building a business, which I had already done at that point. And he looked at me and said, if you're in one of the seats right now, you belong here. And so that caused me to then get into Silicon Valley and the world of high tech. And from there, I was at Oracle for 10 years. That got me into what we now are calling coaching. It was then called consulting. I started a business around White Space Inc. And think about it from like a big whiteboard and you fill it in with all the stuff that's going around your business. And then I would come in and I'd say, erase it all. Let's start at this point. 
and let's make something happen with your company. And so from there, I did that and wanted to, again, keep going with entrepreneurship. So I started a couple more businesses, raised tons of capital, got to get into the inner circle of the you know boys club of Silicon Valley and had a lot of very interesting situations come up. And I knew I always wanted to write a book, but it was always, you know, do I really want to spend the time? Do I really, how do I do it? I don't know how to do it. And it all started to come at me in so many different ways. And so now I'm sitting here, I I have another business. It's called The Relaunch Co. I've been doing this for about three years, helping people relaunch their personal and their professional life. And I have to say that I am exactly where I should be and helping others figure out how to grow and scale, not just their businesses, but themselves. Quite a journey you've been on. And it all goes back to one class in college and a professor giving you a boost of confidence, it sounds like, to say you belong here. What a beautiful message and a good reminder, I think, for all of us, especially leaders and mentors out there, that it doesn't take a monumental effort sometimes to inspire people and push them forward, right? And and here this had this massive impact on you. You mentioned getting inside the Boys Club of Silicon Valley and interesting things happen. Hillary, what What's your favorite story from interesting things happening in Silicon Valley? Oh, I'll tell you, one of them is actually in the book. And I remember when I first had a conversation with Eric and Eric Custer said, all right, what do you really want to write a book about? And I said, oh, I want to talk about all of the highs and lows of being a female in the Silicon Valley. And I shared with him this story, which was... When I was uh, creating one of the companies, it was an internet security company to keep kids, boys and girls safe online. And I was raising quite a bit of capital, upwards of almost $9 million. I had gone to all the VCs. And there was this, this point where a man came into our board and started to really want to take over and drive the business in a certain direction. And I had that intuitive hit where it was like, there's something just not right about this guy. And we kept, you know, going and I I avoided working with him for a long time. And finally I got put in a position where I had to work with him again, intuition, spidey sense was like high alert, high alert, but I couldn't figure it out. I kept pushing down my intuitive hits. And finally I had to kick him off the board. I got into this showdown of an actual like mediator we had to bring in. And finally the company was just done. There was no way we were going to be able to recover. And as soon as that happened, two weeks later, I got a call from the SEC, the security exchange commissioner. And he said, we're investigating this guy. And I said, no doubt you are. And they said, can we have, you know, all of these documents, all of this? I said, better yet, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you my hard drive. That's how confident I am about what I had done and how I had, you know, worked the business and and founded it with a couple of co-founders. And this was super important to me. Well, they ended up finding him guilty. He spent three years in federal prison and it was a Ponzi scheme. And we were one of the companies involved. Mm. Crazy, but that's not actually what the book is about, which is what really kind of makes this, you know, full circle here is Eric said, is that what you really want to write about? And I said, no, as I'm, as I'm talking, I don't. He says, so tell me, what do you, you know, what, what do you want to put out there? And I said, I want to put out a, a book around business, but empowerment about writing a manifesto of being able to create the lifestyle of success for you. He's like, then that's the book you need to write. (laughs) That's what relaunch is. Did that circumstance not create a pretty massive relaunch in your life? Oh, it was what I have found and what going through the book, really uh, writing the book really allowed me to do was process all the relaunches 
that I've had in my life. And for those um, listening right now, if you quickly scan your life through the decades, what you'll find is that there's been significant relaunches. They might be health. They might be around marriages, relationships. There might be around jobs. There might be around companies that have you know, been successful or that have failed. And as I started to think about it, I thought, we're, we're embarrassed many times by our failures, but it's those failures that if you can talk through them and you share them and you're vulnerable about them, there are messages in the mess. And I realized soon enough that as I was sitting in my office for you know hours upon hours coming up with relevant stories that I wanted to share throughout the book, there was pain. There was tears that flowed. There were stories that came up that I hadn't even remembered. And so I believe that what now when I have people read the book, they're like, oh my gosh, this triggered so much in me that I had, I call it in the book, hell in the hallway. And we put things behind doors and we just hope those doors stay shut. But unfortunately, many times they don't. And there's always a reason that things start to happen. And I know we'll go into this in more detail, but there was a a moment that came up for me around a summer cabin that we have. And it was a story that I share at the beginning of the book that was very impactful around an even bigger relaunch that took place in my life. And it was a summer cabin that we've had for 85 years. And in the 85 years, I'd gone up there every single summer. My dad learned how to walk up there. I learned how to walk up there. We would always open the cabin as a family for the summer months and then close it. Well, this specific, very cold, wet, rainy, which is significant uh, day, I couldn't go. I was... um, actually sick and my two older daughters or my two daughters couldn't go, but my son, my brother, my only brother, my dad and my stepmom all went up there. And when they got into the cabin, they smelled a, almost like a a gas smell about it. And so they opened the doors and remember it was raining and they were cleaning up getting it ready. And all of a sudden there was a big rumbling that came from underneath the cabin. And my dad looked at my, my stepmom and my brother and my brother immediately said, we got to get out of here. Let's have somebody look at this and bringing somebody up to a cabin in the Sierras that is far away is a difficult task. But somehow my brother listened to his intuition. And as they were driving back down the mountain, a fire engine whizzed by. And my dad immediately said, we got to go back. And when they got to the cabin at Silver Lake, the flames were taking down the last bit of the cabin. And at that moment, it was that sliding glass moment of life where had they stayed, they all would have been gone. It really caused me as I got the call And my brother said, Silver Lake's gone. I had that moment of like, my God, what's more important? The fact that Silver Lake is gone or the fact that my family is alive. And going through this, a huge concept that I pulled out of this was we need to learn about the invisible to really be able to show up as visible in our lives. And so this moment created what, you know, what does that really mean for not just myself, but so many others? You have this juxtaposition here I'm hearing, which is so many times we see failure as I did something wrong. It's a mistake. I maybe need to hide it. So no one finds out it ever happened. Right. And you frame it if if I'm hearing you correctly, Hillary, as a relaunch, a new start, a positive new beginning. And that is fascinating, right? To close that one door, process it, take some time to learn from it, right? But then open this new door and see that as this new door opening. And it sounds like you've had so many examples of this in your life to, to learn from and grow from. And I love this positive mindset you're sharing. You know, what 
pushed you? What drove you? Because you're a busy person. You're running a business. How, what was that mission or that that why that pushed you to make this book happen? Well, to carry this Silver Lake story one step further, I realized that we had to rebuild and nobody else that was there could really take that responsibility on. And there was such pain. There was such you know, heightened, just, oh my gosh, they watched it. And so I took it on. And two years later, it was finally done and ready. And it happened to coincide with my milestone birthday. And so I decided this is where I wanted to spend it. And I brought 30 of my closest family and friends up to the cabin to kind of christen it with what would become new memories. And it was a three-day event. It was absolutely incredible. It was everything I wanted to put in place the future of the cabin. My mom was there, my dad, stepmom, all of the family, all my closest friends. And I was just coming off the high of that weekend. And I had been home for not even four days. And I got a call from my mom. And I am very close to my mom. Women in my life and my family have lived well into their hundreds. My identity has always been attached to, hey, I'm in, you know, I'm in the mid zone, but man, I got, I got a long time to go. And my mom called and it was a totally different voice. And she said, they've found 13 lesions in my liver. Hmm. It felt like I was in this vortex and I had had melanoma. I had gone through, you know, numerous bouts with you know, closest friends of really, you know, horrible, but this, this was just like, what? You just walked around the lake seven miles, four days ago. How is this possible? And it became a journey of helping my mom. She moved in. We went to the treatments. We did everything we could to fight this battle. And unfortunately, 14 months after she passed, And what's interesting is that that was four months before COVID hit and we were all asked to go inside and not go outside, put our masks on and become very invisible. And what happened during this time frame is I'm trying to deal with my mom's loss and I'm not able to go outside. I'm an extrovert and I'm stuck in an apartment in San Francisco with my husband and I'm processing all this. And it ended up that again, that you got to become invisible. I got to deal with the things that have come up. I got to deal with the the issues. I got to go back and look at some of these painful things that have happened in my life and understand how to move forward with them so that I could be visible, right? Social media, everybody says, get out there, get out there, be visible. You know, you got to be seen. But so many of us are carrying such heavy weights and we don't even know, right? We have stories upon stories of even what our stories mean to us. And during this time, there's something that I've always done in my 20 plus years of coaching. I've never given up coaching even when I had my own businesses is that I had a concept called bugs, beliefs, underground surfacing. And It's all based around neuroscience and it's about these limiting beliefs that come and you think they've, you've put them in that hell in the hallway. You think you put them behind the door and then they start to crawl under and they crawl under in the most inopportune times. And what happened to me in that apartment is my bugs, my limiting beliefs started to just like, I mean, they were all over me. They were coming out in droves. And at that point, this is when I started to write the book. I started to say, I need to get this out. I need to help people understand that the limiting beliefs that we think are, are guiding us that are, you know, basing our lives on, we can get rid of them. We can actually get rid of them. Belief blasters is my process a five-step process. And in doing so, when you're relaunching, as we, you know, most, if I were to ask, you know, a hundred people that are listening right now, are you currently going through a relaunch in either your personal or professional life? I bet 99% would raise their hand. And as a global world, we're all going through global relaunches right now. 
And so with this process, it just helped to solidify that there is like, this has to come out. This has to be what I focus on now more than anything else. And that's how I get people to kind of like feel like, you know what, my gosh, Hillary's writing this about me. You've had as many, if not more struggles, pretty radical ones than you know, most people might have had in a lifetime. And at this ripe young age, you know, halfway to the, maybe at the turn here, as you said, uh, the cabin, your mother, your, I know your father's had some health issues, right, as well. And, and yet you continue to find a way to not let them limit you, to not hide from them, to face these realities head on and blast them, as you say. You know, how do you summon that strength with all what it feels like insurmountable tasks and all these things around you? I, I really like this image it, just from seeing it clearly of you sitting in this small apartment in San Francisco, sort of during COVID feeling trapped. And yet here you continue to per- persevere. You know, how, how do you even summon that strength? Mm, so there's something that I'd love to walk you through because I think it is the base of being able to have a transition, a relaunch and have a transformation. It's cliche that people are like, oh, transformation, transformation, but you have the choice, which is the greatest part. You have the choice of how you are going to have your story written on this specific transition relaunch that you're going through right now. There's a process. If you think back on the 70s and 80s, even the 60s, 70s, 80s, it was all about IQ, intelligence quotient. How smart are you? That's how you're going to get ahead. That's how you're going to find the spouse of your life. Like This is how you're going to do it. And then EQ, emotional quotient, came in in the 90s. And where I have taken this is into today's world. And today's world is not working in isolation with EQ or IQ. It's a new, it's a, it's not a new normal anymore. It's a new different. And the new different is 3HQ. 3HQ is we must start working from the heart. We must know our why. We must understand, you know, we talk about purpose. And, you know, how do you get there? And I, I love, you know, the purpose entrepreneur, the, pur- the purpose, you know, when it's really, really meaning what you're ultimately supposed to be doing. But the problem is, is that we're all confused by doing it. So then you have your heart, but then it's your head. And how do you get out of your head, get out of your own way to have the success that you absolutely can have. And too many of us, especially in the mid zone. And when I talk about mid zone, the average expectancy of life is around 80, a little bit less for men. But if you think about that, that means the mid zone is around 40. So we're talking about how do we make that second act really everything you want. And so by leaning into your heart, by getting out of your head, but by understanding the foundation and the steps and the bugs and getting rid of them through the belief blaster, then you can start to trust your intuition to get to your higher self. And when you you get to the higher self, that's when things start to really manifest for you. That's when you start to bring in the things that you've always wanted. So we had IQ for so long. EQ was a big deal for many years, I think still is to many degrees, but it sounds like a much more comprehensive offering to help people think about what is this greater purpose? How do I go forward? What do I do with this information? So what are some of your favorite examples of that and people finding the higher purpose and and moving forward? Well, I think, you know, for those that haven't heard of the term, the great resignation, what we really are looking at is that it's more of a great revelation that's happening for people. More women are deciding to do different things now create new businesses and, you know, move, realize that they, it is their time, that now's the time to make the decision to go for that promotion or decide to leave something entirely and go create something that's really passionate. Men are realizing that, wait a second, this isn't feeling like, you know, a lot of times we talk about women talk about feeling men talk about like, you know, oh, it's like something I know it's a gut thing, 
But bottom line, it's it's your intuition trying to let you know that there's something missing and it all ties back into the heart. And what's happening with, whether it's corporations, whether it's businesses, is that we're starting to realize that if your business is not heart-based, the resignations are coming, the revelations that you're not going to be able to continue to drive the revenue, they're going to end up happening. So how do we embrace the concept, first and foremost, to live a 3HQ lifestyle so that then you can incorporate into business, corporate, 3HQ workplace? And that's the direction, that's the movement, that's what's happening now with the great relaunch. This is all starting to happen. I just read an article from the CEO of Southwest who said, we want this heart-based business. What does that mean? How do you do that? How do you make people feel empowered within your business? How do you create, I call it the why wizard to be able to ask those levels of getting to the real bottom. It's like excavating, right? You're digging and digging and digging. And finally you get to the point where it's like, yeah, that's what I, that's what I needed to hear. That's where I'm going to start now building up my solid foundation. I really appreciate this concept around the the pandemic. It didn't cause all these problems. It revealed them. As I think you said, you know, it created this revelation for so many people. What is my purpose? Why am I here? Is this aligned with what I really want to get done? And I find your book is very much filling this new void of how do we marry all these things that we want to do with our head, heart, and this higher cause and, and drive forward and then set a path for ourselves, right? So many times we sit in a role and sit there for years on end. And now this has been a huge trigger for all of us. You talk about a relaunch flip. You know, what is that about and, and how might that improve our circumstance, our lives? So I call it the relaunch flip and you mentioned it a little bit earlier. It's being able to take your relaunch and not look at it as a negative, but really how is, how is this now going to be something that I can leverage, something that can put me into a position of being that powerhouse. So even like when I look at my mom's passing, wow, how many people's lives are going to be impacted by the stories that I'm sharing based on her coming up with the relaunch flip, her looking at her life. And I'll never forget when we were in, we lived in Bel Air, California, right? I mean, wow, how exciting. And my stepdad had moved us there and he had, you know, these two amazing banks that he was president. Well, all of a sudden overnight, he was laid off and our life, it was during um, the crash of the eighties and our life changed. And I remember walking around the corner and my mom was saying to my stepdad, you know, we really need to paint the house. The paint's falling off. And my stepdad saying, no, we can't paint it. There's no way we can paint it. We don't have enough money. And I came back from visiting my dad after being gone for six weeks, and there was this one ladder against the house and one can of paint. So I looked at it as we're driving up the driveway, and I said, Mom, how great we're painting the house. And she said, No, we're not. I am. And that woman spent the next two years painting the house single handedly, one stroke at a time. And you talk about mastering the relaunch flip where she did not ever think like this isn't beneath me. She thought, you know what? This is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And the day she finished, we put the house on the market. She She didn't even get to enjoy it, but in her own way she had. And so when you think about whatever anybody right now is hearing come through to them with how are you perceiving certain relaunches? Is it that you're the victim? Is it that you're the victor? And you have the choice that the one thing that's guaranteed right now for you is that you are in control of your thoughts. 
it's interesting how neuroscience is, is debunking everything, right? It used to be like feelings come first than thoughts. No, it's now been proven that thoughts come first. They create an emotion or feeling and those repeated over time create your beliefs. So think back on how much of the stories that you're telling yourself are your beliefs from when you were younger, from not even who you are now. And this is where it gets exciting. This is where people that have sold their businesses come to me and we're working, we're going to get that business sold, we sell it, and they're miserable. When you and everyone, about- on the out- everyone on the outside is like, oh, you're so lucky, you're so great, this is awesome. And they're miserable. Why is that? Because their 3HQ is completely out of alignment. You think about your mom and that, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of painful emotional circumstance that came along with my husband lost his job. We can't fix up the house. And she went out and did it. Talk about a flip, if you will. What do you think that impact was on you watching her climb up that ladder every day? It's not a time period that I was proud of. But as I was reflecting and I thought, wow, you know, years later, I'm like, this is this is what I actually coach on. This is what I lead with is this concept that once you master it, then no matter what really comes at you. And I have a podcast, as you mentioned, and it used to be called the silver lined relaunch. And now it's just called the relaunch podcast, but it highlights, I mean, there are over, I think a hundred plus podcasts now in there highlights people's relaunches. And there are some of the most like awful, crazy limbs lost, put in a body bag, you know, molestation, just awful, awful stories. And I always ask, would you go back and change anything? And the people that have persevered, the people that have had resilience, the people that have had these relaunch flips and been able to flip the script. Each and every one of them, not one person today has ever said, I would go back and change what happened to me. Think about your lives, everybody out there listening. Think about that. So what are you harboring right now that you could do a relaunch flip right now to not just release the outside people, the people in your life, but yourself? That, That be invisible, let it go. And it is incredible when you're able to master the relaunch flip, what you can do for yourself. I can only imagine your friends coming over, your mom, they're working on your house and I'm sure it was embarrassing and and probably drove some shame, but there she was doing it day after day. You saw the resilience, you saw her persevere, you saw her make that flip, take a negative, turn it into something positive and to get energized around. Now you've mentioned this invisible concept a little bit here and turning you know, invisible into the visible, if you're going to have success and personally and professionally, Hillary, what, what's that all about? How do we do that? So there is, you know, you have to first just start with this, you know, whole reflecting, reflect on like, what, what really are the stories you're telling yourself and who, where did they come from? Who started it? And then being able to honestly assess those, you know, via the belief blaster and when you can take this to the next level, and you mentioned, you know, that the TV show that I was on, The Secret Millionaire, I was able to see the facade that I had put on myself that I write checks to charities. I was really good at that. Hey, I'll give money, I'll give money. But I never got my hands dirty. And I was approached with one of my companies to go on to this show to really highlight the people that were doing the exceptional work out there, making a difference, showing up, getting in the mud, shoveling the the horse poop, which is, you know, one of the things that I, they, they made me do because they wanted me to understand. It was that moment that I realized there's something, we talk a lot about gratitude. We talk about being in the state of gratefulness. Again, there's invisible gratitude where you're just saying, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. But then there's visible gratitude where you go out and you actually make a difference. It's not about just the the check writing. Yes. They're so appreciative of that, but how can you help? And when you see the chain reaction that comes with that, that's when you realize that you're, you give and you get, 
It's the boomerang effect times, you know, a thousand. And as you're creating the next wave of your own 3HQ lifestyle, think about how you're showing up. Think about how you are actively becoming visible. And there's this thing in neuroscience that what you think today shows up for you tomorrow. So are you showing up right now in the way that you want tomorrow to come back to you? Invisible being how we channel our own thoughts, our own forward thinking, what we want to do, what we say to ourselves, having that gratitude, then the visible going out and taking action, doing something about it and showing others and maybe finding a little karma for ourselves in doing so, as, as you suggested there. You've also talked uh, a bit about intuition. And in the book, you talk about the power of the pause. Can you talk a little bit more about that? One thing that when you talk about intuition, when you talk about like, where do you feel it? A lot of people say, I just know something. Some people say it's a feeling, it's an emotion. I just feel it. And that's really, you know, heart-based, body-based. And then there's the sense, right? It just had a sense about it. And when you start to look at your own intuition and harnessing it, a lot of times we push it down, push it down. Why do we do that? We do that because in some way, shape, or form, we may have thought we were following our intuition. And then you look back and you're like, wait, I followed my intuition and it was wrong. And here's what I want to share with you. The more I go deeper and deeper into helping people bring out their intuition, build it up. I really realize that intuition is something that you can tap into doing what we call the power of the pause. It's not just hearing something, right? But it's listening to it. Usually what happens is your first intuitive hit is usually right, but you start to second guess it. And then you start to have like, wait, it didn't really work. And it's your interpretation of what happened that's actually not working. But I want you to know that when you have the power of pause, we're so busy being busy in our lives these days. To-do lists are never to-done lists. And what I want to share is that there is a five-step process that you can do. You pause, then you go ahead and you take the three deep breaths. There is you know, reason that we're doing this. It's fueling you up with oxygen. When you're stressed, you're breathing at this very light level. You're not taking in all of the oxygen. So in, in essence, your, your oxygen isn't even like filtered through your body because it's just sitting there. So you take those three deep breaths and then you ask, you ask one question. You ask that one thing that you really want to hear an answer to. And then you wait when you continue the power of the pause. And when you get the answer, here is the best part of the five steps. You must take action because what you're telling your intuition when you take action is, hey, I want a little more of this that's actually telling me what is accurate in my life. So just like you go out and you build up your muscles, you need to do the same thing with your intuition. So many times we look past it, or as you said, second guess ourselves, but I love the simple but powerful exercise as you've shared in so many examples throughout this book and your life and your 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 life's work and coaching, and now bringing this 3HQ method to the world, a uh, really powerful message. And I love that you have this, I, I hate to say simple, but a very practical and easy to execute roadmap, but how many people actually simple. go out and do it and follow the steps? You know, Hillary, as you wrote this book, how do you think it's changed you? And what do you think you learned about yourself along the way? Mm. Anytime you reflect, I had many a pause moments. It allowed me to really crystallize some of the concepts that I have been coaching on for over 20 years. And as you said, how do we make this as simple as possible so that people, it's not this long, lengthy process. It's something that they can start to incorporate into their life today, the 3HQ lifestyle. 
And what this book did, and this is why I encourage, and I think I've, <laughs> I think I've had you know numerous people now join the next group with yourself and Eric to to begin to write their books, is because there's such clarity, and I always talk about clarity, plan, accountability, and that's exactly what this program allowed for. It allowed me to get super clear on what am I really trying? What message am I really trying to get out there? that can impact millions, truly millions and millions of people as they're going through their own relaunches so that they can have that transformation so that it's a positive transformation, right? We want that too. So this whole program that writing the book, and I have to say, I have goosebumps when I talk about it coming out and being able to share this with the world and hearing the impact that it's going to have. Such an incredible journey you've been on. And I love the fact that, you know, sometimes we think about books as I think many times as an output exercise. And in fact, as you shared, we it's a learning exercise. We learn more and more. And as, as you shared, it helped you refine your own thinking around what you've been doing for a number of years. And I think that's such a powerful message as we learn and study more about what we do and teach each others, we get better at it and learn how to think about it even more clearly. When you think about this journey so far, have there been any unexpected positives for you? You mentioned one about just feedback that you've gotten from some of the beta readers, but anything else that surprised you along the way? What's happening is that the transformations of my own clients and my group coaching and my own clients one-on-one, they're able to have the impact faster, right? And time is our most precious asset. And being in my mid zone, I don't want to have to wait to really start enjoying my lifestyle success. I, I, I want to be able to do this and help others get there faster. Why does success have to be something in the future that we can never get to, right? And exactly. here you found a way to get there and not only get there, but get there at a faster rate. Hillary, what's the key message of the book, would you say? Oh, I would say that it's it's entirely up to you at this point to not ever feel like you are stuck or in a place that you can't move forward. And when you take that one small step, you no longer are stuck. You are now in the position to be the powerhouse of possibility and live in that 3HQ lifestyle. We all own the power to get unstuck. We just have to take that first step, which oftentimes seems impossible, but finding those moments of bravery to to move ahead, clearly attainable. And you've laid out so many different roadmaps for people to get there. Incredible. What is next for Hillary to Caesar and the book? (laughs) It's getting this out to the world. It's allowing people to realize that that having relaunches doesn't define who you ultimately are going to be. And so the more that we can spread the word, the more that people can share this with others that are going through relaunches that feel like they are in that place that they're not able to move forward. They're not able to get to that level in their business, in their life. This is really the opportunity. Again, it is not about a new normal. It's about a new different And it's time for people to be able to step into that new different, but have the toolbox to help them know that they're going to have success. Not a new normal. It's a new different. And now you've helped them create a roadmap to be delivered at scale through the form of a book. That is awesome. Hillary, if people want to learn more about you and relaunch, where might they go? Ooh, so the best part is you can, if you have your phone right now listening on it or grab it, you can text, you can text 55444, text 55444. And in the message section, just put relaunch. And that will get you into everything that we are doing around the book. And it will get you to the relaunchco.com so that you can stay engaged with us. Stay, you know, we have we have so many different events that we're offering. And by texting 55444 and typing in the word relaunch, you're automatically going to be connected into our circle, which is our community. What a creative and easy way to connect with you. Text 55444 and get connected with relaunch, spark your heart to ignite your life and all the great work Hillary has done. 
Her book will be out late this spring, 2022, wherever you buy books online. Hillary, thank you so much for sharing your message here today, helping people think about their own challenges they face and flip them, turn them into a positive. Yes, one door is closed, but now there's think of it as an opportunity to move forward. What a brilliant message to share with the world. Thank you so much for being on the show and, and joining us today. John, thank you for letting me share this important message of the 3HQ. The pleasure is all mine. Subscribe to the Creator Community channel on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, review, consume your podcast, and please write us a review if you enjoyed Hillary's episode. No doubt you did. I'm your host of the Creator Community, John Saunders. Keep moving forward. Yeah.